everybody. This is Real Talk presented by Realty Pro 100. I'm Jonathan, and I once again have the privilege of speaking with Mr. Blake Partanian. And I, I have to tell everybody first and foremost, I, I had to, I had to bring my A game today, just because I, it's, it's just one of those moments where we always have good conversations, yeah. anyway, right? Naturally. Yeah, but I, I wanted to make sure I was prepared for this one. Because I felt this was a conversation that, that's that been long overdue. For us to, to have a conversation and just let people know what's on your mind and um, kind of open the curtain a little bit so people can kind of get a little more idea about, you know, who you are and why we're all here, you know? Well, I'm glad so. you're prepared because I have no idea what you're going to ask me. <laughs> I, I, do that on, I do that on purpose. I do that I do on purpose. I do it on purpose. <laughs> But um, but no, I'm I'm super excited. Yeah. I, I'm I'm super excited about this, and and I've I've been I've been dreaming about you know how I want to start this, like how I want to start this this whole process, and I keep going back to the same thing. I keep going back to the same thing. Like my question, just to, to even start this, is you know why why now? Why did you why did you come back? Like you. You've had acknowledgments, awards, you've built teams, you've built offices, you've, you know, spoken into the lives of some of the, the best agents in the industry. Yeah. And, and you, you didn't, you didn't have, you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to come, but what, what brought you back? I left uh, the last chapter thinking I was fulfilled. And then I found myself within weeks realizing that if I left the stage, everything that I take with me is part of the generations that came before me. Mm. And I felt an obligation to those professionals who came before me to share their legacies, their ways of doing business, and the, the collaborations that, they, that genuinely created the real estate profession in the first place. Okay, okay. Because there's people who work their entire lives to have a career and the trajectory of a career that, that, that you've had in this industry. And a lot of people aren't able to accomplish that. So I, I, I knew there had to be, you know, something about, you know, just, it's something you feel like you still, there's something still left for you to do. Is, is that it? Oh, this is the biggest vision I've ever been blessed with. And I didn't seek it. It found me. Okay. So Explain I, that. What so, I, so I woke up one morning and I sat there for five hours writing out the entire hospitality realty uh, core DBA Realty Pro 100, not knowing whether the names were even available or not. It just okay. flowed out of this stream of consciousness. This location that we're in was actually the place that I had envisioned as our office. And I had no idea whether it was available or not, even though I, you know, was recent, you know, I've worked in the community. Uh -huh. I just didn't know about this specific building. I'd never even been in this building before. So wait a minute, let me get to all the so, years. So you knew before that this was the place you wanted. I wrote it in at, without knowing the wow. address. I said the wow. building on the hill okay. by, the, okay. by, you know, at the 91 and the 55 freeway. Wow. Because of how I look at when you're building something to last, mm -hmm. you want to be in the, have the ability to work 360 degrees. Okay. And so when, when you're in a, when you're at the end of a fork on a wheel or spoke of a wheel, yes. the spoke of a wheel, you, you, you have a very limited market from which to draw from. Hmm. So what we were able to accomplish in the last mission in the last company was we built one of the largest offices in that organization at the end of the spoke. Okay. And I wanted this to be the hub of the spoke. Wow. Because it was focused on quality, not quantity. Wow. Okay. So you, but it's, it's something that you mentioned it came to you. It's not something that you really, you didn't wake up and, and know it was coming though. So it, did it throw you off? Were you surprised? Complete, well, I, I did not go to bed that night wow. thinking tomorrow I'm going to write a business plan for a real estate company. Okay. I woke up and I had this powerful movement and, and, and Joanne was like, what are you doing? And I said, I, I just got these things. I got to get it out of my head oh my and goodness. I have to let it go until I can't think it, you know, until I have no, no more to write down. Yeah. And by the time I got done, I just 
remember, you know, going through the whole process of building the Rapid Equity Builder Program within that, uh, speaking about the legacy of, you know, our, uh, my brothers and my grandparents who, you know, came to Southern California basically with a few thousand dollars in their pocket and the value of the properties that they once owned based on today's valuations, if they had kept everything, would be over $5 billion worth wow. of real estate that they accumulated from a single investment in 1968. Okay. So when people tell me that there's no opportunity in real estate, I'm just like, no, you you know, you, you put your money, they had their money in Security Pacific Bank. Could you imagine if they had just let that compound, grow? Uh, uh, wow. that, that, that couple of thousand dollars would be worth still a couple of thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> Instead, they built this empire of, you know, with their knowledge and their skill and they learned what they didn't know and they, they sought, they sought professional guidance from people who were willing to show them and they always what I found out through the years after they were no longer involved in organized real estate is that the others who told me their stories, they did, my grandparents didn't share their stories okay. so much. They, they just said, you'll learn about them as you go through your travels from the people who you're meeting. And it was true because people would say to me, you know, your grandfather always did the right thing. Okay. Okay. And it varied depending on the circumstances, what that right thing meant to that person in that situation. Wow. So this... he never put his commission first and he never put his success first. He always put, he always put the, the you know, the, the transaction as the most important thing to finish mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, cr trying to create a winning outcome for everybody. So this is personal to you too. Oh, There's so a little bit of a. It's yeah. extraordinarily personal because we grew up at the table where mom's conversation was no real estate talk at the dinner table. How many families would have that in the 1970s? Wow. wow. Because my father was a real estate you know, broker and my, and, and my, um, my grandfather, you know, we, we would talk about what grandpa was doing. Okay. And she just had enough. And just she not said, at the she dinner said, table. She nah, said, we're not doing it here. We can do it anywhere else, but we're, we're not, not going to do it during over dinner. Wow, those must have been some interesting dinners. <laughs> must have been interesting dinners. Now, I've I've personally uh, worked with different brokerage firms, and um, they kind of all have that that kind of that cookie cutter template, you know, kind of thing gone. It's 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 just that kind of same redundant thing in that pattern. And that's not to put anyone down. It's just kind of since the '80s and '90s, that's just what it's been. Why? Is this vision so different? Why is this so different from, from, from what was happening before? So I looked at, it's a powerful question because to me that, that is the underlying driving force. Yeah. Is that the technology companies want to transactionalize the real estate process, which mm -hmm. means they want to eliminate the real estate agent. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to somehow push a button on a computer and one day you buy a house. Okay. Ultimately, you know, or simplify it as much as possible. And the, the income through the years has, has exponentially been reduced to the real estate operators who own the real estate companies yeah. because the high tech companies have come in and they take the leads that are generated under the contracts of the agent and between the agent and the seller mm -hmm. and, and they monetize it by buying it off the multiple listing services and then creating their own websites. Yep. Which, which then the, the people think, oh, that's X company's listing, when that company has no interest in the listing. They don't have any contractual right of course. to it through, through as, as uh, you know, in relation to the client. Yeah. Right? They don't even know who the client of, is. No, They've never no, met them. They've, They've never, never been inside the house. Exactly. Yet they're professing to know the exact value of that home and what it should sell for. And I'm always fascinated because I've been in tens of thousands of homes probably in over 43 years uh -huh. and I've never seen two exactly the same and I've never been able to stand on the outside and predict what the inside one what the inside looked like that's a good point that's so unless point. it was brand new and I just was going through a builder's track they yeah. all they're all cookie cutter the same you know with the same finishes and everything of course but you might have someone who's got a beautiful facade on the outside and you go well that's amazing and then you open the door and stuff's piled to the ceiling yeah, you never know. You never know. You it's, never it's know. Like, it's you like, never it's know. like a box of Cracker Jacks. You get a surprise in every, in every, house. <laughs> <laughs> in every house you open, you know. This is true. <laughs> so so you wanted to take kind of that same vision and apply it to Realty Pro 100 Hospitality. You want, that's, is that, you didn't want it to be like, 
I saw the opportunity for the demise of the real estate professional to be slowed down. Okay. Because you know, if if, if we look at what's happening in um, lending, you know, push a button, uh, do a loan application. Yeah. Um, push a button, you know, order your your property profile. Could it be that? Could push a button, you know, uh, or, or order your escrow documents. It has evolved. It, yeah. Yes. It's, it's it's getting closer. Yeah. And so if the real estate agent's able to bring additional value, because we're not just transactional, mm -hmm. we're, rela we're relationship builders and we bring wealth opportunities to clients. First. So we have an advisory capacity, whether we're technically allowed to be called financial advisors, because we're not, yeah. we're not financial advisors, but we're, we, we talk about the real estate and to go back to if my grandparents had just decided to leave their money in the bank, yeah. th they would have left no legacy for the family. Correct. But instead, they they they, they bought an they, they bought their first set of apartments and 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 continued to reinvest. Mm -hmm. See, the, the the to me, the worst thing that an investor can do is say all my investments are paid off. Mm. I go, you're not leveraging your money. Money is a tool. I see. And what happens to the tool? Every year, the value of the money goes down. Yes. Because the government can't help itself. It spends and spends and spends and spends. Huh. And they increase taxes, and our living standards actually drop yeah. unless we have some kind of way to exponentially grow it. And the example I use is that my father in 1965, when he bought his first house, mm -hmm. it was $25,000 in Placentia. Okay. That house, he was making 18000 a year. Yeah. So, so that house is now about a million one, yeah. which means it's gone up 25,000 times four would be 100,000 times 11. I already know so where it's, you're going So it's gone up wow. 44 times. Wow. But the income for the engineer is maybe four or five times that at around 100 to 150,000 a year if, yeah. you're, if you're an engineer on the, you know, in the masses. Okay. You know, unless you're an exceptional, of course. you know, engineer who's part of a tech company getting, you know, all the stock options and everything else. But the average engineer is not making 675,000 no. or 700,000, which would be the same ratio as that, as that, as that time. Wow. And even the two working family members cannot typically achieve that. So then what also happens is that those same families get to retirement mm -hmm. and they're looking at well, we, our standard of living is based on three hundred thousand, and they have five hundred thousand in retirement. Yeah, that means they've survived. They, they've saved one year's worth well, of retirement, even though their four hundred one k looks huge. Yeah, and it's it's but their so, standard of living can't survive that. And it's so fascinating because at the end of the day, it's almost like we're setting ourselves up for failure. Yeah. So, so do you believe it's the responsibility? Of the agency, I know you mentioned advising, and in that sense, like, is that something that, because you've always been, not only from, from what I've learned about, you've always been someone that's able to change the mindset of an agent, and I think it starts there, but is that is that something you feel like is, is more difficult to do now, today, or, or maybe not as much as it was back then? I think we had an extraordinary run from 2011-ish into 12 into 13 that transcended almost a decade before the Fed started really pushing rates up again. Okay. So in the beginning, I had estimated in the fall of 2017 that the Fed would start raising rates in 2019 based okay. on what we were hearing and seeing. Yeah. And I wrote about it, and I even put out blogs to the industry okay, and whoa. was basically generally dismissed, right, as that you're a heretic. You know, you're talking about what the future is going to bring and you have no idea. And they didn't like that. And huh? I said, and I said, okay. uh, you know, I said, I'm willing to take the risk because, you know, there's, the, you see patterns in the way that the federal government operates the, 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 the federal open market committee. Yeah. And the federal open market committee, you know, they, 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 they announced that they're going to raise rates and that has an impact on the market immediately. Yeah. Then they actually raise the rates and that has another impact on the market. And then, and then, and then they announce they're going to raise them again, and that has another impact on it. It just keeps happening. And they, and they, and they've done it now since the start of. Uh, 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 so I pre predicted that it would be 2019, mm -hmm. and so in 2019 they raised them like four or five times, and interest rates were approaching four percent, and the market came to a screeching halt oh, yeah. in in the spring of, of 2019. You're talking before COVID. Then. Before COVID. Okay. Did. 
Okay. And so it looked like a lot of companies were going to be teetering because their, their, their spring market had completely disintegrated where they typically 60% of the sales happen in, in those three months mm -hmm. of the year from March, April, and May, mm -hmm. maybe into, a little bit into June. Yeah. And so that didn't happen that year. So the, the, the Fed started lowering the rates throughout the summer, and by the end of 2019, real estate companies were flush with cash again. So we opened on the, we opened on November 2019. In November 2019, our first three sales were, um, you know, two million plus on the first sale, mm -hmm. a double ended sale on the second sale, and the third sale was 2.8 million double ended down in uh, Corona del Mar. And so we were establishing ourselves as a high end boutique company. Yeah. And then four months into the launch, COVID. COVID. Wow. We're actually holding an event with a, with about 200 people in it, including many agents looking at our company with a Holocaust survivor t t telling everyone about his experiences. And we're all social distancing for the first time, wearing masks for the first time. And that was in March. Completely unpredictable. Completely unpredictable. And then they said just two weeks to flatten the curve and two yeah. weeks turned into two years. And we were <sighs> still shut, start again, stop again, start again, stop again. If I got close to you and you got tested for COVID, I'm supposed to sit out now for 14 we gotta go. days now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That must have been, I mean, there's a lot of people who had to get through COVID, but it's interesting that, you know, this whole vision and this this opportunity came like literally right before it started. Yes. So it's almost you never got to start. You did, but then it, it, it you yeah. know, it was more of like you mentioned the jump start, the start again, stop again, start again. But you've been able to 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 kind of bounce back and, and, and get through that in a sense. So well, it required a, a resilience of everybody's resolve to to see it through because it would have been really easy for the agents to cut and run yeah. and say we're going to go to a company that uh, is already established because of we're course. not going to be part of this launching company. Yeah, um, I was asked to create the pride of ownership during that time, which okay. was that where the owners, the agents, could be owners in the company. Yeah, and we created that at the request of Jennifer Zagarella, who is one of our you know star agents, who's now still with us, but uh, she's moved to uh, the Idaho market yep. and, is, and is working successfully in the Idaho market. And we wish her well and her family. Nice, but 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 the, the you know the reality is that. California as a, as a real estate market is always going to be desirable yeah in part because you can't find the weather anywhere else no that that's the biggest part right that's the biggest part and to be this close to the ocean mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to have the lifestyle mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. that's why we put up with the smog and the potential for earthquakes and the and the it, and, and the negativity of traffic and yeah. all of the things and the high taxation because you can't find this quality and standard of life. Anywhere else. No. No, no you can't. Southern California offers a unique perspective. It's not just Orange County, it's all of Southern California. Of course. Now, does that make, you think that makes the agents spoiled? Do you think they're, you know, like because of the things that go up and down with the market, but we still have this dynamic weather? Um, I even heard you one time, I think you, you'd mentioned to an agent, I heard you say you didn't want to, have a bunch of buyers in your car. What, what does that mean? Can you explain that? Okay, so I'm gonna say something that, you know, most of the industry isn't gonna like, and it's, uh -oh. just the way that I, it's just the way that I framed my business model okay. to be the most effective I could be. Because yeah. I wanted to manage between 15 and 20 listings in my inventory, my personal inventory when I was an active agent yeah. um, at any given time. Okay. And so I was attending uh, seminars uh, primarily with Mike Ferry as the speaker, of course. who was who was who was the who was who would become the most powerful speaker on, on the subject at the time. Yeah. And I was a personal pro protege of his, and and I respected him immensely for his belief system. Yeah. And uh, in my first uh, buyer experiences, I borrowed my brother's car. Uh -huh. It was a 1981 Buick Skylark, wow. and it was brand new. <laughs> and I and and I took it out to show property over three weeks period, and it had those crushed velour seats. Okay, the, the 1981 Buick Skylark four door. I had a two door Z28 Camaro. There was no way you were going to show property in that. No. Right? So I'm borrowing his car, and when I get done with it, and I find out the people. I call them the day they said they were going to write the contract, uh -huh. and they say, "Hey Blake, we did exactly what you told us to do. We bought a house from an ERA agent." Mm -hmm. 
And I said, no, I didn't say any agent. I said, this ERA agent, uh, meaning me. You. And they, and they bought from another agent, and I wished them well, and that was the last I spoke to them. And then I said, okay, I just spent three weeks in over 100 degree temperature in Dallas, Texas, uh, showing property. And then I checked out the back of my brother's car as I was cleaning it to give it back to uh -huh. him. And they had spilled ice cream all over the back oh, of no. the ice cream. It was all in, embedded into the crushed velour seats. Oh, no. So there I was trying to remove it and then explaining to my brother, who's much bigger than me, by the yeah, way, yeah, <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I had just, <laughs> just messed up his car. Wow. And it was a very awkward scenario, let alone the fact that I had to tell someone I was married to at the time that I lost the sale, the one that I've been talking about for the last three weeks. Oh no. And so I said, how can I, frame my career to where I never face that kind of disappointment again. And I then I started looking at if I control the listing and I bring the sellers the outcomes they want, they will refer me to their friends and family who want to sell and I'll only work with those sellers who are going to be buyers, but I won't put them in my car. They can brilliant. follow me it is in so their car. Brilliant. That is in so those days, brilliant. nobody let them follow. You didn't follow them in your car. You wanted to, you, you know, the, all the trainers were saying, put them in your car and don't let them out of your car yeah. until they buy. Yeah. And, they and I was like, that, I'm not that. putting them in my car no matter what. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and it's not personal to anyone. It's just, it's just, it's just, I was just the same way with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can honestly say no one ever saw property in my in my Z28 Camaro. I took them for a ride if they wanted okay, to go for yeah, a ride. I was going to ask you that next. I didn't show them property. Wow. And I didn't, and I and I had only ever had a two door car my entire career, so that I could not show property. That's see, and and that, and I think that so, so every morning I'd get up and I'd look in the garage and go, "You can't sell a house to a buyer today. You got to go take another listing." But see, it it put you in position to make sure that that was going to happen. Yeah. So it, it was something that you decided for you and it worked for you yeah. and it put you in position to always be successful. So, and I, I think that's, that's what I was getting to before. I know being in California and being that there's plenty of opportunity, um, at the end of the day, it comes down to mindset, but I like that you're always thinking about the agent and how to get them to a place of, uh, prosperity. How do you get them to a place of success? You know? Um, and, and I think, one of the things that that I'm 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 excited about, and I know there's there's probably not even much you can you can even say about it, but uh, you have this Robin Hood mentality where you know Robin Hood like you know took from the rich and gave back you know to the to the to the poor or whatnot. Not saying the agents are poor, but I I know you've always wanted to return things back to the agents. And I've never wanted to or would have felt good winning at someone else's expense. And there yeah. are personalities who just think they've got to stick it to someone or make it, you know, make a deal no matter what. And um, I've been in those kind of training seminars and I've literally just walked out. I've been wow. walked. I've walked out even in companies where I was working on the senior staff and, and they told me, you know, you walk out, you're gone. And I didn't I'm not going to say that I walked out and left over. The, uh, you know, over the objection, but I definitely was late coming in from the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I never followed the, e the edict, you know, because it's just, I'd rather, uh, I, I, I always look at it this way. One day I'm going to face my grandfather. Uh -huh. I believe in that. And yeah. It's important to me. And I want him to know that I honored his, his legacy and my grandmother too. Well, that, well that, no, that's, that's that's a good thing. That's I, just this is for me. I think that's a good thing. Now, now that said, I I I, I want to get you out of here, but I, I I know you're working on something, and there's been some conversations floating around. Nothing's been made public. There's no press releases, mm -hmm. and now you're giving me that look. <laughs> but but um, because I, I know you're a big believer in disruption. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us anything about it? Or you or is it is it is it very tight knit? Is is there anything you can say? Is there anything we can look forward to? Because I know technology is a huge part of, of what you believe in, and, and that's and that that in itself I think is an amazing thing because there's a lot of people that are you know walking backwards. So I love the fact that you are constantly evolving, even this organization and everything that you're touching. I think you know for most people they they rely on the tech giants to provide them the information. Yeah. And we have to believe that it's accurate and 
again, I go back to the flow of information. Information is knowledge and knowledge is power. Yes. Right. So when I look at the flow of the communication, in the beginning of my career, the real estate agent controlled the entire amount of information that was in the universe. We had the MLS book, uh -huh. and that was the, the book yes. that had all of the listings. Gotcha. Now the listing, as soon as it goes into the multiple listing service, it syndicates to hundreds of websites mm -hmm. that make it look like those companies actually control the listing. Exactly. And so when you search for an agent, if you put in top agent in a certain market, the actual agent who listed the property doesn't show up till around page three or four. So the tech companies take the lead mm -hmm. and best case scenario is they sell it back to you yeah. as the agent for 30, 40 or 50% <laughs> of, of, course. Uh, of the income. Yeah. And so you go into the transaction thinking, well, I'm building a $600,000 a year business. And ultimately, I have to ask, is the consumer really being served at the highest level by someone who's speaking about the house who's never seen the house? Of course. Yeah. How can you not? Representing. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So, so what we're working on, and we're really close, and um, I'm super excited about it, is that um, a, a friend of mine, and myself, we, we have, we have uh, taken the technology opportunity and we, we, we have an app that is on the verge of being, you know, being done. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's beyond exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and it's gonna give the complete control of the process back to the real estate agent Wow. And cause a massive disruption to the technology companies because they will no longer be the controller of the flow of the information. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, I look at, we get gifts from the universe or God or wherever you think they come from. I yeah. personally think it's from God, but that's, you know, I respect other people have of a course. different opinion. Yeah. And I'm just thrilled to be one of the two people involved in that, this. That are in this, yes. And that to me is going to be the legacy statement that I leave for the industry is that we gave a million and a half NAR members, National Association of Realtor members, their contra contractual <laughs> benefits back. And the three million agents in total in all the states, the opportunity to have a direct communication from the prospect without having to pay those referral fees wow. for something as simple as maybe nine ninety five, maybe nine dollars ninety five cents a month, uh -huh. as opposed to paying. Okay, so Blake, you were saying such fire, you you, you just blew up the cameras <laughs> like everything. I saw it, camera two over here just, melting just melted. Out yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm I'm almost in, in in just like disbelief and not not in a bad way. I'm I'm just so excited that you know someone who means so much to the industry, someone who's given so much to this industry, someone who loves this industry. You're always talking about um, just you know what this all means to you and 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 how passionate you are about it. I'm so glad you're going to get to give something back, and I'm more excited about the fact that you're not ready to leave yet. Reminds me of like. Tom Brady coming back that 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 one last year. He had something to prove. I keep cheering for him again yeah, he, he, you know? because because you know I, I I appreciate it. You know when I see people like Sylvester Stallone, yes. you know, still making movies and still uh -huh. you know after he could have just quit after winning the you know winning his movie winning in 1976. Yeah, you figure that's a long time ago, exactly. and he's still here trying to find relevance in his career. Exactly, and and and, and things. And I, I, that's a that's a cool reference, just because I think when you do things like that, because Rocky was made in '76, and then now you've got yeah. Creed with Ryan Coogler. So it's like you can build something, okay. and then someone else can take that idea and run with it, but it's still yours. You know what I mean? And that's exactly the legacy I'm hoping for. And the next generation will have something 
to build from, that this isn't an ending thing. Yeah. Um, like I always go back to the Walt Disney example. He built an, the most amazing place where people come from around the world. Absolutely. And um, they, they get to enjoy it if they want to, and they can choose to pass on it if they want yes. to, if they don't yes. want to wait four hours for a 17 second yes. ride. You know, <laughs> my nine-year-old doesn't pass. He, he does not pass on it. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I know so that one too well. We were kids, and we would walk in there, and there was almost nobody there. You know, yeah, it's, there you it's, go. It's become so popular, but the but but you know the the reality is that you know I, I this can sound selfish, and I'm not trying to sound selfish because I don't I didn't want my legacy to be oh yeah he was that guy who was number one in two different companies well, and, and it was all about him. Mm -hmm. Because it was never about me. Yeah. It, it honestly has never been about me. And the people who are closest to me, who really stop and look, and they go, you know what? He had to make some tough decisions throughout his career. Yeah. The market makes you tough. Of course. Right? Did I make them all right? No. Did I, did I, did I, did I, did I lose my, you know, cool from time to time? Yeah. But did I serve the industry? with more than I took from it, I would like to believe that this final chapter, if there was any doubt before, yeah. this final chapter this will be the, that he, he, he gave it, he left it all on the field of battle and he gave it back to the industry that he cared so much about. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't know how to even, we're not even, that's it. We're that, that's like mic drop. It's, it's over. <laughs> it's done. We're going to leave it at that. Blake, I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to sit with you and, and do this and, and, and just kind of get an idea about, you know, why this was even created and started and, and what you're looking to leave behind. I, I think it's absolutely amazing. And I'm, I'm just excited to be a part of it. Well, so. on, on behalf of the company, or the investors and the agents, the, the people who truly believe in the vision. Thank you, Jonathan, for taking absolutely. the time to have the interest. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Thank always you. a pleasure. Thank you. Everybody, this is Real Talk with uh, Realty Pro 100. Uh, join us again soon. Talk to you later. Oh, <laughs>